Good afternoon, everybody. Hope you're having a fantastic day. Today, we're gonna to look at how to create a killer product listing for your Amazon product, okay? Um, so before you do that, make sure you, of course, subscribe to turn on notifications for when I go live. Nothing, Siri, what are you doing? We don't wanna do that. Uh, and of course, leave comments with questions down below. Smash that like button if you like that sort of stuff. But let's get straight into it. I have a presentation for you guys. So uh, here we go, okie dokie, cool. So how to create a credit killer product listing. The first question we really have to answer is, why should you be focusing on your listing? Um, what you have to remember is that your product page and your pictures are your storefront for your Amazon product. So if you were walking down the street and you had two shops side by side, exactly the same shop, so they were, for example, a um, let's say a furniture shop, and one of them looks a bit dingy, kind of the the, um, the, sh the storefront didn't look very nice, the, the, uh, the um, <laughs> what do you call it? The bloody, I was gonna say title, but it's not the title. The uh, sign out the front is kind of old, and maybe one of the letters has fallen off, and one of them's really kind of like brand new looking, it looks like you. It looks enticing to enter the store. Which store are you going to go into? You're going to go into the one that looks nicer with the nice products on show, uh, rather than the one that's maybe looks a bit crap. And that's exactly the same as when people go on Amazon. When they search for a keyword, they're looking at pretty much just the pictures. But if they click on your picture and it's not what they thought it was going to be, they're just going to press the back button and they're going to go find another one that is just as good <clears throat> or better. Sorry. And they're going to go and buy their product. So if you're not focusing on the listing, you're literally throwing away customers by not focusing on your listing. So in today's video, I'm going to show you basically everything you need to do to create a killer product listing. Um, now these topics do go quite in depth. These are going to give you everything you need to go ahead and maybe do a little bit more research on um, exactly what you need to do for each section because each of these topics are entire videos in themselves and some of them are multiple videos as well. So let's go through and um, just have a very quick look at some bad listings. So for example, this is a bad listing. Um, hopefully you guys can see this and I'm going to show you a good listing for the same sort of product as well. This is a dry bag. Um, you know, it just says Highlander Bergen Dry Sack Olive. There's a few bullet points, but it doesn't really tell you any, any information. Um, very, very bad listing, okay, very bad listing. There's no branding on it, there's no extra pictures. So let's go with another one. Let's keep this in mind, guys. This is a water bottle. Now they have a few pictures, but they're not taking full advantage of them. Um, their title is not optimized. Their keywords, again, they're just features. There's no, there's no reason for, there's no kind of sales pitch in there. Again, bad listing. And then we have a look at some good listings in the same area. So a dry bag, again, but this one, again, it's branded. We have all the pictures we want. We've got seven pictures there. We have everything that's included in the sale in that first picture. We have a really great optimized title. And then we have bullet points which are making use of the characters that you have available to you. You have the feature and you have the benefit. We also have different colors and things like that and great reviews. So five star reviews and 730 of them. So. This is, a, this is a great listing. Um, I actually kind of use this as a case study in my full Amazon course because if you're doing a product listing, you want to make sure that you're doing it well and look at people that do it well and just not copy them, but take influence from what they do. Here's another one that I like to use, these water bottles. Again, the first picture is enticing, it's colorful, it's high quality. Um, they have a few pictures, they've got some lifestyle ones, they've got you know, features and benefits, they've got a good optimized title, and they even have like the little tick box, the tick um, uh, icons in their bullet points as well to pull your attention to the features and then the benefits. Again, multiple colors, multiple sizes. Um, so again, another great product listing. So here are the key areas that we are going to look at today. There is pictures, titles, bullet points, descriptions, and reviews. Now these are, I would say in this order, the most important, well actually no, maybe reviews needs to be nearer the top actually, um, but pictures, titles, bullet points, description in that order, and then reviews again a little bit higher up. So we're going to go in depth with these ones. If you get any questions, just let me know in the comments. So first of all, let's go on to pictures. The first picture is the most important picture. Think of this as your storefront. Um, if people don't like your picture, they're not even going to click your listing. Now, especially if you're doing PPC, so pay per click advertising through um, uh, Amazon or any other platform, it's all about your picture. If your picture's not good, you're really not going to be able to get people onto your listing and then even convert them to a sale. So the focus a lot of your time on what your first picture is going to be. Analyze the competition 
and make sure you're doing what works and you're not doing what doesn't work. Okay, you put yourself in the customer, um, you know, from the customer's perspective. Um, in this picture, you must show the product on a white background. Um, lots of people do this wrong. They have the, maybe like a lifestyle photo. You're not allowed to do that on Amazon. You has to be, it has to be on a white background. So make sure you do have that on a white background. No infographics, so no kind of stickers or like, you know, comes with free ebook or anything like that. Um, no infographics. You can only put in products that are sold in the listing, which is why, again, you can't do lifestyle photos because there'll be things in there that aren't sold on that listing. So you can only put in things. So if, say for example, is the dry bag bundled with that um, little phone holder? That's fine because they're sold. It's a bundled deal. You get it as part of buying the dry bag. You're allowed to do that. And also be unique. And what I mean by this is don't just get the pictures from Alibaba from your manufacturer and just put them up there. That's not unique. Other people will have those photos. Why would you want to be like other people and have the same storefront as other people? So get your own pictures done. Make sure it's branded. Make sure you're unique. So that's the first picture. That's really important. If you want to take a screenshot of this, guys, or ask me any questions in the comments, let me know. Pictures two to seven. So you have the option to have seven photos in total. Um, for pictures two to three, well, you can have between two and three. Um, pictures from different angles. So if it is a product that you can take it like from different angles. So people, you know, the customer wants to see what it looks like from different angles, maybe the size next to something else that's more familiar. Um, then have that angles picture, hang, angled pictures in there. And that's super important because when a customer, they can't physically touch the product, but you know when you go to a shop, you pick something up. Let me pick something up, let me pick up a candle, right? So you pick something up and you'll have a look at it. You'll look at the bottom, you'll look at the sides. You want to look at all the angles. So when you're on Amazon, obviously you can't pick up the product. You want to give people as much information about the product as possible through your picture. So spend two or three uh, pictures on different angles. Then have one picture maybe with your dimensions or like the key features, maybe if you don't need to have dimensions, but something that's a little bit more specific in terms of um, if it has to fit on a certain area, or again, like if it was a candle, how big is the candle? Um, again, maybe you can have it with something else that people know the size of already, like a hand. Um, Next one is a picture of what's included. So if you have the candle and you have like a lighter with it <clears throat> and you have it in a box, you know, put everything that's included within that sale all in one picture. Even if you, have, you haven't you have done it in that, that first picture, what you can do is you can then put infographics on that picture that's not the first picture, if that makes sense. And then at the end, have one or two lifestyle photos. So that's, if again, if it was the candle sitting on a desk or sitting on a mantelpiece in, in the life, in you know, in actual lifestyle manner. So you can play about with these seven pictures in total. Um, for example, if you only have two at different angles, then you can have two lifestyle photos. If you have three at different angles and you have one with dimensions, one with what's included, you can only have one lifestyle picture. But make sure you get at least one lifestyle picture in there because you want to let your customers know what it's like to have that product. What does it look like in its natural environment? Um, you know, what's the benefit going to be for the customer? So you really want to portray that through your pictures. And this is why pictures are so important. You wanna make sure that you're selling each of the key features through the pictures. Okay, so make sure you uh, you do that, guys. Where can you find product photographers? So my personal recommendation for this is find someone local. So someone that you can actually go to, it doesn't have to be like round the corner. Um, I've used two different product photographers, one that's very local and one that's a little bit further away, uh, kind of in central London. And um, you know, I, next time I might test another product photographer. And the reason being is you don't really know what's good and what's not until you actually until you do it. So I would find someone local, take your product to them and actually own that situation. Say exactly what you want, plan out the photos that you want done, the angles, the number of photos, and if it's lifestyle, will you need to bring props and stuff like that and organize it in advance so that you have all of these ready to go. You can even do things like if it's a if it's a product that you can do a Valentine's sale or an Easter sale, then bring the stuff that so you can get it all done in one in one time, in one shoot, so that you can have those pictures for later on in the year as well. So I would personally go on Google and find product photography, product, product photographers in your local area or you know, within a certain radius that you'd be happy to travel to. Um, honestly, that's my recommendation. In terms of price, they will vary depending on the type of product, if you need to have models, um, if it needs to be like with something, if it's a baby product, do you need to have a baby? Do you need to have like a car? Do you need to have um, it in a home environment, in a kitchen, in a bedroom? So this stuff will change depending on your sort of product, but invest in product photography, guys. I, I can't stress that enough. Invest in it, it's worth it. 
titles, this is the next thing. So titles are um, super, super important. And this is what you need to think about. Include the most important keyword that you want to rank for first. Because Amazon algorithm is going to look at your title, it will look at your back-end keywords, it will look at your bullet points, your description, and it will rank your um, product depending on what people search. Now, you want to be ranking for that main keyword, the one that brings you the most traffic and the most sales. You want to have that keyword first in your title. A lot of people put their brand name, but you've got to remember that people aren't searching for your brand name because they don't know you, that you're not, you're not a big seller. So I personally feel that's a waste, there we go, uh, you know, don't add your brand name, waste of characters. So use keywords to generate your title, not descriptive words like great or brilliant or bright. Um, don't really use descriptive words because they're not, they're not important. Unless people are searching for those words, then don't add them in. If you don't know how to do keyword research, that's another video completely. But do your keyword research, make sure you know what your top keywords are and kind of put them into your title so that it makes sense, um, but cram it full of, of really important keywords. What you can also do is assess the competition for who has good and bad titles. So earlier we looked at a good, um, a good title versus a bad title. Look for all the people in your niche with good titles, kind of copy and paste them, put them onto a Word document and just take out what people are doing that are similar um, and then kind of mimic what other people are doing. Don't copy it, but you can take influence from it. Um, incorporate the best practices. Don't add your brand name at the start because it is a waste of characters. You're not going to rank for your brand name. Honestly, it's a waste of characters. Um, you have 500 bytes. So that basically means 500 characters, including spaces. So if you do the space, that it will be four characters okay or four bytes so you have 500 bytes make sure you make the use to make make sure you make the most of that um, and you'll go of course you can optimize this over time as well and you can change your keywords and all that sort of stuff title super important guys the next one is bullet points so bullet points um you get five bullet points and always have it as a feature first and then the benefit to that feature um, if you looked at the bad one that i showed earlier they were just features there's no kind of, there's no benefit to them. However, the good ones, they always have a feature and a benefit. If you look at some of the biggest company in the world, it's always feature benefit. Here's what it is. Here's how it's going to help you. This is 500 bytes per line. So again, that's 500 characters, including spaces. And again, you get five bullet points. And you want to have the main selling points in there. So the real main selling points. And if your competition has any flaws that yours doesn't, so you've assessed your competition, you've realized that one, you know, one of them is maybe not very durable, then you make sure that in your bullet points you say that yours is durable and you've gone through loads of tests, etc. So for example, you know, don't use this one exactly, this is just something I threw together. Durable design is the feature and the benefit to that is the example product is made with quality in mind so that you won't end up having to replace it every few months uh, and then we can say something we've conducted um, you know, very weeks worth or months worth of testing in different scenarios to make sure that you get the best product for your money. Okay, something like that. So what's the feature and what's the benefit for that customer? Um, always add a guarantee in your bullet points as well. Customers want to know that their money is safe and that they're going to get their money back. Of course, Amazon have a really great returns policy anyway for customers, but you want to let people know that as a business, as a seller, that you're willing to guarantee your product. So if there's any problems, you, know, you can put like money back guarantee as your feature and say, hey, we'll take all the risk off your hands. If there's any problems or if you're even just unhappy with your product, let us know, send us a message, contact us on our website or whatever, and we'll happily refund you or exchange the product free of charge. And it's just set, you know, making people at ease. And, and when you look at sales, you want to uh, overcome any limiting beliefs. And some people might think, oh, what if it goes wrong? Um, you want to be able to assess that concern excuse me, you want to be able to assess that concern in your bullet points straight away. Because a lot of people won't look at your description, but they might look at that first that first kind of page, you'll look at your photos, they might look at your title, the price and the reviews. And then if they like that, they could have a look, little look at the bullet points, especially if they're comparing two different products. Super important. Description. Okay, description. Structure it in this sort of similar way. This is what a lot of people do. They'll do a little introduction. They'll have some features in there. So these are the key features, just like you would have in your bullet points. You'd have specifications, so the technical specifications. You'd have guarantee, again, just going over what the guarantee is, and you'd have a call to action as well. Um, now you have 2000 bytes for this. So again, 2000 characters, including spaces. So a little bit more, but that does get used up quite fast. And you can actually format it with HTML. 
Now I'm going to go into the HTML in a second, but the other thing you can do, you might have seen this on, on Amazon, when you scroll down and they've got loads of pictures, they've got like infographics and their, their description is really big. And now what that is called is brand registry and I will do another video on that in more detail because it's a whole another video. Um, but look into brand registry if you want to do any of that stuff. It takes a little bit of time to, to um, actually make it happen as well. But let's go into the HTML. So this is, it's pretty simple. Now you don't have to go super in depth with this, but to get you started, to go bold, you just do um, whatever that's called, like arrow, I don't know, left arrow, I don't know what it's called, B, right arrow, I don't, what's that called guys, I don't know. And then this text is bold, just put a backslash in there before the B to kind of close that off. Italics is just an I, underline is a U, uh, you can add in multiple, so if you do that, and then you said this text is bold, italic and underline, that's what it will look like, you just make sure you have to turn off the bold, turn off the italics and turn off the uh, underline. And then if you want to do a, a new line, you just put B, R in those little kind of brackety things. Uh, that's nice and easy, and that's to be honest, most of the things you need. You don't need to make it. You can do indents and stuff like that, but I wouldn't go. I wouldn't go too crazy on this sort of stuff. Um, so let me show you a little example again. Feel free to screenshot this, but just search in Google for basic HTML code. So this is an example. If I wanted to say hello, my name is Johnny, and you under, underscored and bold. Try uh, have you tried using HTML in your product listing? If the answer is no, that's in italics and bold, then you are throwing bold customers away, enjoy. And again, we have a few um, line breaks in there as well. So as you can see, what I've done, to create that first line break, you have to do two new lines. So the new line would take you onto the next line down, but you then want another space in between. So you have to do another new line. And then I've done bold and underlined, you, and then I've turned off bold and underlined as well, okay? And then you go straight into the next word. All you do is you don't have to um, put spaces in this HTML or anything like that. If you want to go onto a new line, it's all done through the code. But if you were to type that in and you copy that into your Amazon listing, it will turn out like the finished one on the right hand side. Uh, again, you only have 2000 characters for this, so you've got to make use of them. Make sure you use a word count tool and um, you should be absolutely fine with that. Cool, so reviews is the next thing. Reviews are super important. Um, when you're first starting out and you have a brand new listing, get verified and unverified reviews. Um, and the, the reason we want to do this is we need verified review, reviews because they really help the Amazon algorithm, but unverified, unverified reviews will just help customers make buying decisions. And at the end of the day, they're not verified, so they are just people leaving reviews. You've got to be quite careful as to who you ask to do this. Um, but if you do ask people to do it, ask them to attach photos of the product. And you can even have this in your email follow-up sequence, asking people to take photos of the product in use or when they get it in the box or whatever. That really helps people, again, make that buying decision when they look at the reviews, if they can see other people taking photos of it. Have an email follow-up sequence for getting more reviews. Use something like JumpSend uh, or Viral Launch or any of these, these services that have email follow-up sequences. So you can say, hey, Okay, we saw that your product's been delivered today. We've hoped it's right, arrived correctly. If there's any issues, let us know. Just reply to this email and we'll make sure that um, you're looked after. Another three or five days later, you said, hey, you've used your product now for a few days. Um, we'd love to know what you think. Here, you know, just leave a review on Amazon because um, it really helps us as a business to grow and all that sort of stuff. Uh, you can even have product insert in your actual product to say, you know, we'd love to hear your feedback. But if there's any issues, please let us know and we'll rectify it. Um, I would say get between five and 10 reviews before using PPC or any sort of giveaways or anything like that. The reason being is you wanna have a converting listing before you start spending money on getting traffic. Um, so you wanna have a few reviews on there. Definitely want some verified reviews before you start again paying to get, um, paying to get traffic. This is really important. If you are getting verified reviews, you must have, or the person that does a verified review must have an Amazon account where they've spent more than 50 pounds on it. Um, that is super important. So if you are going to ask people to buy the product um, and leave a review, or just buy the, yeah, just buy the product and then they happen to leave a review, uh, they have to have spent at least 50 pounds on their Amazon account. Otherwise, they won't be able to leave that review for you, which is unfortunate. So just make sure you ask that if you are getting anyone to do that for you. Reviews are super important though. Very, very important. So this is a little recap. Pictures, make sure the pictures are basically the majority of your listing, the majority of your time is spent making sure you have good, good pictures, spend money on pictures, have product photography done, and get a graphic designer to make you a really good logo, and spend just spend some time on it because that is your storefront. Your title, your bullet points, and your description must show your key features, the, the keywords, uh, and everything that sells your product, okay? 
don't leave anything out if it's important to your product because no one's the customer's not going to know unless you tell them the title make sure it's optimized the bullet points make sure it's feature and benefits the description make sure it's formatted properly reviewed make sure you have some reviews on there get some pictures as well that's really going to help convert cold customers into actual customers. So that's a little recap for you guys. Now, there is another thing you need to do and that is backend keywords. Again, that is a slightly longer and more in-depth video. If you'd like to see me show you that, then uh, leave a comment down below. Just let me know that you'd like to see it and then I will arrange that for another video for you guys. So do you want an in-depth tutorial on each of these sections? Because each of these, again, I've done it in one video as an overview, but these are in-depth videos by themselves. Um, and if you do want all that sort of stuff, it is all in the Amazon FBA UK course. And of, of course, that content is not specific to the UK. It is anywhere selling on Amazon, that content is exactly the same. So it's all in there if you do want in-depth knowledge and in-depth tutorials on those particular things. Um, of course, when you get the course, you get extra support from the private Facebook group for students, my ongoing personal support, and I actually have hired an FBA consultant for um, all things kind of seller central, FBA in the UK and the US, and um, she kind of helps me with all the, the nitty gritty kind of information that is sometimes a bit harder to find, um, especially with regards to support on like you know, hazmat reviews and on gating and um, anything that potentially could be an issue for your product. So do you want some free support? This is the last thing. If you want some free support, all you have to do is go into the description. There is a couple of links for free Facebook groups that I run for Amazon FBA in the UK. Um, again, in there, you get my support and my FBA consultant also goes in there nearly every single day and answers questions. So if you have any questions, you can just go in there, look at the pinned post and uh, you'll be able to tag her in any of your posts. So she will answer you as soon as possible. So hopefully guys, you've enjoyed that. Um, remember guys, make sure your product listing is the best product listing. Make sure it's a killer product listing so you can convert a high amount of prospective, prospective customers uh, yeah, into, actual, into actual customers and hopefully repeat customers as well. If you have any questions, make sure you leave them in the comments or reach out to me personally at info at johnnybradley.com and uh, make sure you subscribe to turn on notifications for when I go live, PayPal people up to £25 three times a week and of course, smash that like button if you like this sort of stuff. See you very soon, bye bye.